And I'm really excited to have you all here this afternoon as we uh, kick off the fall season of Ollie activity and classes. Uh, before we get started, just a, a little bit of house cleaning or housekeeping, sorry. I'm so used to being at home, I'm just wanting to clean the house, I guess. Um, to start, we're going to mute everyone's microphone. Um, so your mic will be muted. Feel free to post some questions in the chat box and then we'll address those during a Q&A period here in just a little bit. Um, so today, really the, the purpose of this is just to give an update on how we've weathered this pandemic crisis over the past few months, uh, talk about some exciting news on the upcoming semester, and then we're going to have a little fun um, with the trivia game on the decades spanning the 1950s through the 1970s. Um, so to get started, um, I guess it's really not a secret that a lot's changed um, since the last time we kicked off a, a fall semester or even a, a semester in general. Um, little did we know that when 2020 started that we were going to be doing our uh, fall opening house or fall kickoff through Zoom. Um, but although, <clears throat> although that doesn't seem really normal, I know one thing for me, and I think for Sandra at least, is that uh, the anticipation and excitement of the fall semester does definitely seem normal. So um, I remember going into the spring, we thought everything was planned and, and feeling really good. Um, and then COVID-19 hit, so it feels good to have a little pressure on us with the upcoming semester. Um, as many of you know, you know, this past spring, uh, classes were disrupted by COVID. Um, we've had to cancel many of our classes. Others, we quickly transitioned to an online format. Um, others, we were able to postpone to, uh, to the current term. Um, and although we faced a ton of challenges throughout that, it, it was exciting for me to see our staff, our members, and our volunteers come together to push through and, and to continue to offer some programs throughout, um, throughout those crazy months. Um, our instructors were really great in working with us to adapt classes. Um, and it was great to see all of our members um, embracing that change and, and, and joining in on our virtual programs. Um, it was also really humbling um, when our members at the end of the year stepped up and raised almost 15,000, just over $15,000 in an end of year fundraising campaign, um, despite with everything that was going on. Um, so very encouraging, very humbling ways that we kind of finished out the spring semester. And now as we kick off the fall, uh, we've had over 250 members um, either renew or recently join and they're registering for classes. Um, so that's exciting and I highly encourage anyone that's, that hasn't joined to, to join us as a member and take full advantage um, of your all membership and a full year, year's worth of learning. So that brings us to today, uh, where we have an entire season of classes and activities planned. Um, starting with this event today, we've got a class going on at Drake Airfield right now, and they run all the way through mid-December. You know, we know there's a lot of uncertainty about the future. Um, so over the past few months, we've kind of shifted our focus and really um, have looked closely at how we can ensure that we are successful in offering programs um, at the same quality that we were um, throughout, throughout this fall as we navigate um, the pandemic further. So how are we going to do that with the current state of things, you ask? Well, we're going to offer opportunities to participants uh, virtually via Zoom. Um, we're going to have opportunities for in-person activities with strict safety guidelines and protocols. And we're also going to have some opportunities that are a combination where we have participants both in-person and online taking part in the exact same class. Um, and our goal through this whole thing is just to ensure that all participants, whether they're in-person um, or they're online in Zoom, they feel safe, they feel comfortable, and that they're having a valuable and rewarding experience. Uh, so now I'm gonna kind of switch over to Sandra, who's, who's um, down at Drake Airfield, and just kind of show you some of our safety protocols that we have in place. We have a, a class going on down there right now. Um, you'll notice that we've emptied the space out quite a bit, um, that, and moved the chairs around to allow for proper social distancing. Uh, masks are mandatory inside the classroom and in any public spaces. Um, where social distancing can't be done and we've implemented all the other protocols to limit contact um, and ensuring that everyone is safe in that in that space and, and in our in-person activities. Um, in addition to the space at Drake Field, um, we also are going to be partnering with Mount Sequoia Center to offer classes in their venues under the same guidelines and same protocols. Um, so as you can see, our attempt um, in making these in-person classes the quality shouldn't change, the experience shouldn't change, but they will look a little bit different um, than they have in the past. Um, but what I really wanted to highlight um, today was, and talk about the most, was our opportunities to attend classes virtually. Um, this past spring, we really just kind of got thrust right into the online learning world. 
Um, it's not something that we haven't explored and we even experimented with a couple summers ago um, doing a live stream class through the Smithsonian American Art Institute. But what we didn't know was that we were going to have to rely on this format at the level that we are and as fast as, we, as we've had to and at that scale. Um, so what we've really done this summer is worked hard to try to make enhancements to those virtual offerings so that they have the same type of quality and the same level of engagement um, that our in-person activities would have had. So a couple things that we've done to improve um, are in this area. Number one, we've, we've moved to Zoom. Um, so Zoom is going to be our online platform this fall. That's what we're using today, as you know. Um, if you're not real familiar with it or if, some, if you know someone who's not, it's, it's very user friendly. Um, it has the same tools and resources that are available in a normal classroom setting. Um, so, for instance, a presenter or an instructor can share their presentation. They can use a whiteboard and make comments. Um, they can even poll their students. And those are the same, same uh, resources and tools that the participants can use, too, um, if we wanted to get to that level of engagement. Um, we've also really um, enhanced our technology. So, you know, technology is always going to be an issue um, with any online format of, of classes or activities. So. Um, what we've done is gone out and equipped our rooms with um, new HD webcams and conferencing equipment. Um, we're going to be micing up our instructors and working to improve the audio feed for the virtual, um, virtual participants. We've enhanced our Wi-Fi in that facility as well um, so that there's no issues um, with streaming those classes live. And we're doing all of this in conjunction with the university's team that's dedicated to online learning and teaching. Um, so we've got a really good support team that has really thought out a, a solid integration plan and um, we're real hopeful and, and confident that it's going to work very well. We've also got space um, that we're making available to instructors, space and technology. So um, if an instructor wants to come up here and not worry or come to our office, we've got a space with good Wi-Fi, with webcams, with laptops um, that an instructor can teach from. Um, or even, you know, possibly reserve a webcam if they want to teach from their own space, but we're making these um, these resources available to our instructors to ensure that we don't have a lot of, of glitches along the way. Um, and last but not least, you know, we know the online component can be a little intimidating sometimes. So we're wanting, we've done what we can to make it as easy as possible um, for participants, instructors to access and enjoy it and have a comfortable experience through the online format. Um, we've created an entire web page dedicated to online learning via Zoom, which I'll pull up and, and show here in just a minute. Um, we've also, and it's got information on tips and tricks, anything from registering for the class, how participants will get a link to how they can watch it on their smart TV. Um, so it's very in-depth, Every all the information is out there. Um, but if there's ever anything that someone doesn't know, or maybe they need a little more individual teaching or just want to work one-on-one -on -one with somebody, we are here to do that. Uh, all you have to do is just simply call us, uh, email us, and we'll get in touch with you and make sure that you're able to um, access and enjoy the online, um, online portion of the class. So I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. And show you all our webpage that is dedicated to this. So just a couple updates, you'll notice at the top of our homepage, um, you can see our coronavirus update. There is a link to our safety guidelines for in-person activities. So these have been shared in our catalog. Um, they've also been sent out in emails, but we have those available on our website too. Um, and we'll be continually addressing these and updating these as we move forward and, and things happen in, in the pandemic. Um, sorry. And then if you look again at our webpage, on our, I mean our homepage, we've got a link here that's uh, to online learning via Zoom as well as on our, our, top, um, our top header bar. So if you click on that, it will take you to a webpage eventually that we've created um, in conjunction with a number of other OSHA institutes and with our support staff here on campus. Um, and it's very detailed. So if you're a member and you have questions, you can click here and it will pull up a document um, with resources. Um, we're going to be implementing uh, or updating this with information and resources for our instructors. Um, we've got tips and tricks. Um, so very in-depth on 
you know, how do you register and join the virtual class? How do you chat on Zoom? You can even test your system. We have a test room set up. So if you scroll down and read through this, you'll get to a spot where you can actually click and go into a Zoom, re or Zoom, Zoom meeting on your own and test your audio and practice your audio and get comfortable, um, get comfortable with the format. And we even break it down to individual links for testing audio and testing uh, your video. So we've really tried to make this as easy as possible. Um, we're going to be also uh, scheduling practice sessions as we did in the spring. Sorry, I'm going to be admitting some folks here. My apologies for the delay and for those who are joining late. Uh, my apologies, we just now saw that you were um, waiting in the waiting room. So I'm just going over some information and updates on the fall term. Um, kind of slid through that quickly, but you know, often during our open house, we highlight our classes and a lot of our activities and social events that are going on. Um, things are so unpredictable at this point that, that I just encourage you to look at the catalog. It does a great job of highlighting courses on its own. Um, we've outlined what classes are online, which are virtual, and which have an option. Um, so I highly encourage you to, um, to check out the, the catalog. It's online. If you want a paper copy, let us know. We'll, we'll mail one directly to you. We've got plenty here in our office. Um, and, you know, there's no doubt this time is going to be, be a challenge. There's going to be bumps along the way. We're going to learn things as we go. Um, but it's also going to open up new opportunities, and we're going to have a lot of new successes as we as we go through it as well. So, um, with that, I just I hope that you all will join us this fall, whether it's in a class, um, whether it's in an online event or or activity. Um, most of all, I hope you join us as a member. Um, that's the best way to really fully take advantage of what we offer here at Ollie. And um, like I said, I just hope to see you guys in the fall. So with that, I was going to just kind of take any questions that might be out there. And if, if you haven't chatted in the chat, feel free to unmute your mic and ask a couple quick questions before we get into our fun trivia game. I do see a couple of folks out in the room that, that have participated in our online uh, classes this past spring and even taught some. I know, Ken, you were a uh, you taught a class for us and have been in some classes and even got some things going on this, this coming fall. So, yeah, Josh, I thank you. I'm real excited. I think the uh, uh, committee's done a great job in putting together a great list of classes. You may have mentioned this and I just missed it. Do you have any more updated information on the history of pandemics class? We do. At all? We do. So the, the reason well, that was kind of formed late, developed late, and that's why we didn't have the dates in the catalog. But we've we've got a really cool program on the history of pandemics. Um, basically, what it is is um, individual online sessions that are self-paced. So when you register for the class, you'll get a link to a self-paced online class. And then there's four different sessions, and I'm I'm not going to get these right, but I think it's the flu, 1918 flu, um, color. Uh, I'm going to get it wrong, but we've got no, four Josh, I've, I've got it here in front of me. It's yeah. a bubonic plague. Uh, this yeah. is a great list of <laughs> bubonic plague, smallpox, yellow fever, cholera, and the 1918 flu pandemic, AIDS, and then COVID. Right. So four of those will be working with faculty in the history department that following the self-paced um, online module we'll actually do a live, um, live stream virtual discussion with a faculty member on campus mm. um, on that same topic. So um, we've got those listed online. They are $29 for um, the models that include the post discussion and then a flat 25 for the, the self-paced course. Um, they're, in the, they're online on our registration page and Global Campus and the, the Department of History have been really helpful in, in working with us to, to put those on. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I would ask Sandra to, to chime in, but I know she's unable to at this time, but I'm sure she's got some stuff. Okay. <laughs> any other questions or any, any thoughts, concerns about the fall, questions about any specific classes? Trish, I know you're on there. You wanna you wanna promote any any classes that you help help get on the schedule? Um, there is uh, Tim Nutt's class, which would be more like a regular Ollie class, a two-hour. Right. 
he's going to be coming up from Little Rock to talk about pandemics. I think more focusing more on Arkansas, so people wouldn't have to take the the bigger, longer class and learn a little more history. And oddly, that was set up early on in the ball game <laughs> before we knew how the fall was going to work out. But um, hopefully, that'll work out well. Thank you. Good point. Um, you know, a couple of things just real quick, and this was in our catalog as well. You know, as I mentioned, with so much influx and so much uncertainty, there's always that chance that, that we'll be changing some things with classes, whether it's a date, whether it's the format. Um, so always be prepared for that. Check your emails. We're going to be sending out announcements as often as possible with any updates and changes. Um, so please be checking those. And again, if you know, I, I encourage you to to take a chance with the online format. I know that being in person is might not be quite uh, the level of contact that you're comfortable with at this point. So um, I just really encourage everybody to take advantage of some of the virtual classes. And if you have any questions or concerns or issues with those, you know, just reach out to us and we'll we'll definitely here here to help you guys. Um, if there's no other questions then I'm gonna get completely out of the way and I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Brian Promick, uh, the Dean of the College of Education and Health Professions. Great, thank you so much, Josh. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm seeing some nods, so that's good. Um, Josh, thanks so much for, for inviting me, first of all, and for also working with us so closely um, to make this a true team effort. Um, you and your administration um, ha have really been great partners in terms of making sure that, you know, even with all of the challenges that are going on, we forge ahead like normal. You know, I have my catalog, right? I know that you guys all have yours. Um, and and we, we are moving forward um, by, by giving these challenges sort of the one-two punch. Um, the one is that we're keeping things as safe as possible. Um, and, and this is, you know, part of our college, you know, you guys, Ollie, are part of a college that also includes public health. And so, you know, we're very attuned to what are the ways that we stay as safe as possible. I mean, I think all of the other colleges are, are kind of joining in and understanding these issues. But these are things that we have real experts who this is what they study. And so, you know, when Josh says something like, we're going to keep masks on um, as required indoors, um, you know, these are very carefully thought out decisions. And so you can guarantee that, you know, things are being uh, discussed at very high levels that are, are keeping those activities that Ali engages in as, as safe as possible. And then at the same time, the, the, the one, two, the, 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 uh, the two of the one, two punch is making the things that we do as effective as possible. So we talked about safety, you know, for those courses that are still going to be in person, but we then that that second half is by making sure that um, we use new technologies and we actually find creativity and ways of making the things that we do remotely, not just, oh, a pale comparison to the original, but sometimes even better. And you may be surprised to hear that kind of thing, but it's not something that we're a stranger to as a college either. Because in addition to having something like public health as part of our college, we also have educational technology part of our college. And for years, we have been doing things online that are very, very revolutionary and that are very, very effective. So as an example, um, you, you might think to yourself, well, you know, geez, I'm not sure if you can really, you know, make education as strong online as it can be in person. But we now are, have done several years of actually doing our doctorate in nursing as a completely online program. Think about that. We're, we literally have accredited and are as confident as we can be that we can actually make people nurse practitioners through a completely online program. So imagine what we can do in you know, a simple course. And that's one reason that I'm here today is not just to talk about this, but in a moment to do a little bit of an activity with you 
that is not the kind of thing that we probably could have done in person as easily. So in closing, again, I wanted to sort of thank you all for, um, you know, for, for having me here today. Uh, I, and, and I want to thank you for kind of being on this journey with us, for meeting these challenges with resilience and flexibility, um, with creativity, with being optimistic about the future, 